Hello, hello, this is Irene with Soga Talks. Hello, everybody. My guest is Mamta Agarwal Rajnayak. Mamta, how are you? I am great. Thank you so much, Irene, for inviting me here. I am so excited to talk to you and your audience today. Beautiful, beautiful. Just a word out there, all right? If you're watching Soga Talks on LinkedIn, follow Follow Sogotax on LinkedIn. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. And if you're watching small snippets on Twitter, you're not going to regret if you follow me, Irene Lakovetsky at Sogotox, because I speak with fascinating people in tech. And we discuss big topics. We discuss AI, automation, digital transformation, number of innovations, FinOps, DevOps, you know, bunch of topics, cloud, you name it. And I do want to hear back if what we're discussing is resonating with you. If organizations you're part of is really into innovation path, or maybe some of the companies kind of taking back a moment right now because we know that the economic environment is changing and many companies really about cost saving nowadays. So we still we still want to talk to fabulous people who can enlighten us about fabulous innovations out there. And Mamta, you're just the right, right speaker for us today because we're going to talk about AI and digital transformation and innovations that's happening as we speak despite of cost-saving initiatives or maybe because of cost-saving initiatives. But let's just uh, take a step back, Mamte. Uh, why you do what you do, okay? What brought you to technology and to the topic that we're about to discuss? Sure. It's, it's a long journey, uh, uh, Erin. So let me uh, try to make it very, very brief for us. Uh, I did my uh, bachelor's in mathematics, and that is because maths was my love ever since I was a kid. Um, after that, I went on to do my uh, master's in economics because I wanted to understand more about how the world works, how people make money, right? Uh, so I think with that combination, uh, analytics was something that was very, very obvious for anyone with that combination. And that's what happened to me as well. Uh, I got my campus placement at a bank where I was helping them with their, uh, you know, loans portfolio analytics, helping them to know when the customer would have tried, uh, whether they have the intention to pay and things like that. And that's how my analytics journey started. I worked with uh, with bank, then I worked with uh, retail analytics. My previous uh, organization was Accenture, where I worked for last eight years. And that's where my entire journey of digital helping the clients with digital transformation started. So, uh, and, and this was particularly, you know, I, I would give, though we keep, uh, you know, talking a lot about the, the cons of pandemic, which happened a couple of two, three years back. But then one of the best thing which pandemic has brought to us is how technology has boomed over this time. Just prior to pandemic, we started on the digital transformation journey for our clients. And during this time, I think everyone, including our clients, realized how important technology was, what all good things it can bring to the table, and how you can unlock so many efficiencies in the system by using uh, the the digital products by using technology to the best use so what is digital transformation first of all right i mean usually people always assume that if they go on the digital transformation path all of a sudden their revenue will boom mm -hmm. their profits would boom but that's not the case if i were to put simply a definition to digital transformation, right? And I'll do that later on uh, because uh, let me first tell you how I got into this, right? I mean, so, you know, during the pandemic when when we were doing it all, there were so many different things. I realized that uh, we, we needed to educate our clients into, right? And that's where, uh, you know, I started exploring a lot about, uh, uh, AI products as well. And that's what my current role and at my current organization is all about as well. So I'll tell you more about it. But right now I am working with uh, American Express and I'm leading their uh, enterprise wide AI ML platforms and products, wherein we are helping American Express with 
uh, the digital transformation in the area of uh, AI and ML for the entire organization. So yes, this is what I do. This is what I enjoy. And uh, let's talk, talk more about digital transformation. Let's dive right in. Yes, what an amazing, amazing career journey. And I want to know everything about it because guess what? You know, we have to make these conversations very practical because our audience want to know, all right, what are the practical advices? What kind of challenging that the challenges that you're facing, right, as part of your organization? And what are the answers to those challenges? What are the best practices? So please, please define for us what digital transformation is. We know the definition by the book, but guess what? This is a mainstream now. It's not the innovation innovation anymore, don't you think? Exactly, exactly. It is a mainstream. It is not something which will keep you ahead of the competition, but it will allow you to run at least along with the competition. It's a, it's something which I think nobody in the entire industry can ignore now. That's how I put it. But what is it, right? What, what do we think of digital transformation and what are those some of the low-hanging fruits that we should keep in mind when we are starting on the digital transformation journey? Right. So if, if I were to put digital transformation in in one sentence, I would say it is a mechanism to really use technology to eliminate inefficiencies in your system. It's not going to all of a sudden bring in a lot of revenue boom for your organization. It's not going to suddenly make your products uh, the, the, that your company is producing shine. But what it is going to do is it is going to, by eliminating all those inefficiencies that you have in your system through using technology and digital products, it's going to create immense amount of time for you to really go on a path where you can start to really brainstorm, come up with the right strategies for your organization and go on a path that leads to innovation in the organization. And that's how I see it, right? It's not something which will, you know, directly ingest uh, the ways to go on a revenue booming path, but it is going to create so much of a time for you and your brain power in the organization that the mundane tasks, the task which can be done without really applying our brains, those will be taken care by machines. Those will be taken care by technology and hence will give you lots and lots of opportunities to really do the kind of things that you really enjoy doing. So that's how I see it, Irene. You always spoke about automation already because there is no transformation. There is no new technology brought to, to the organization without even thinking, right? How do I make employees more efficient? How do I reach my revenue targets with, with resources in hand? So can you please bridge automation initiatives and how hard it is sometimes to transform the organization? Oh, totally, totally. Automation is something which I think uh, is my favorite ever since uh, I was in school, right? I mean, I would always, always think about if, if there was something which I was repeating over and over, I would always think of how to create a process around it. Of course, I didn't have so much of access to technology at that point of time, but I would always create a process around it so that I won't forget it in future and I don't have to go through each of the steps. So that's, that's what I still use the same definition of automation uh, whenever I am trying to do that for my teams or whenever I have been, uh, you know, suggesting it to my clients in past. And, and I feel that, you know, some of the challenges, like you were asking, Erin, right, what are the challenges that people face when they are going on, 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 on digital transformation or a subset of it, which is automation journey, right? I mean, first of all, there is a lot of expectation from it. And I would strongly suggest everyone to be on a practical set and don't expect too much in the beginning itself because that's what leads to a lot of disappointment because we are in so much of hurry to gain something out of it that we very soon lose the momentum. We very soon start feeling that it is not giving us the kind of benefits that it is supposed to give. 
but i i tell you you know with a little bit of a patience and putting in the right efforts in the right direction i have seen a lot of a lot of advantages coming out of digital transformation and a subset of it which is automation now the challenges that i have faced right one which i already spoke about right second is skill again you know very very important challenge because when the organizations have been operating for years and years they have uh, the the skill in their organization who is loyal to them and has been doing things in a certain way so all of a sudden when this technology comes into the place they still want to do a lot for the organization but they may not have explored these new skills and they may not have the right uh, you know um uh, courses they they may not have done the right courses or they may not even know about you know what is expected out of them so that's one thing which i think the organization should really keep in mind when they are going on this path because they in short term may not be able to really create that skill within their organizations as well and that's where i use the triple b concept i say you either build you either borrow or you buy skill in short term right eventually you'll have to build it in your organization because you want to make it sustainable but to start with it you either buy or you borrow best is to borrow otherwise you go and you know acquire another uh, you know small startup or something which has these kind of skills but it is important for you to first convince your employees that you know these are the kind of things which is which is going to help them make themselves more productive more efficient etc and secondly brought in uh, bring in the right skill that will be required to take care of the transformation at least in short term and long term have a strategy how you are going to build around the skill within your own organization if you are able to sort out these two things have realistic expectations and have the right skills that's when i feel you have won more than half of the battle that you make it sound That's easy it. manta you make it sound easy definitely but you know what i hear a lot about uh, people process and technology elements okay yeah, those are three elements that keep moving during any transformation so can you please throw in data because i want to hear how ai is going to help us to go to this next level but people process and technology what should organization keep in mind when they dealing with their data first exactly and 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 i i'm so glad you brought this uh, um, you know question erin because data is something which becomes your best of wealth if it is used well but it is also something which can really drain your brain power as well as your money if you're not really if you don't really know what you're doing with it right and why i say so is because if you would have seen some of the stats in uh, you know recently and in fact i am referring to maybe uh, some old figures in 2021 when i was you know going through some of the numbers i saw that every day we in the world are creating about 2 to 3 dbs of data on a daily basis right with with all the pandemic and everything i think this num- these numbers increased tremendously but then even if it is 2 dbs of data every day it's a plethora of data and that's what is coming from you know our our social media feeds and things like that right similarly within an organization there are so many various departments each of them is doing something or the other and hence if you are capturing all of this information there is like tons and tons of data you are creating every day and what i have seen is you know in the organizations there is no single person or there is no single department who understands the data from end to end which is getting generated in the organization and that's bec- that becomes a lot of challenge because we know that we have a lot of information but we don't have anyone who knows what to do with that information because nobody even understands what this data is how it is getting generated what are the sources what are the definitions in fact i have seen in one of the organizations which i was helping with in my previous uh, role was there was this one client which had 
27 definitions for a simple KPI called sales. Can you imagine that, Aaron? 27 different definitions for sales in one organization. Oh my God, right? And that's what really made us think that how do we really help organizations with organize, organizing their data better? And that's where we came up with this concept of creating a bedrock of data for them. And that's, I think, is the first and foremost thing any organization should do to create a bedrock of data, which is the single source of truth for anything and everything that the organization wants to do on, on, on this data. And there was a very, very interesting analogy one of my client had given it, but it was a different client than this 27 definitions. But then, you know, what she said was to make a Caesar salad, if you were to do it, if you have all the right ingredients with you, you may take two minutes to do it. But if you have to really bring or, or create all of these ingredients from scratch, you may take anything between two months to six months because if you're going and growing your own lettuce or you're you know growing your own tomatoes and things like that then you may take anything between two to six months but if you have all the right ingredients then it takes not more than two minutes and that's exactly what happens with digital transformation your things are so organized your data is so organized your skills are so organized that to make any uh, to, to bring any insight out of the data, it takes you very less time. But if the things are not organized, it can take you horrendous amount of time, which takes your brain power, which takes your productive time, and hence it's a lose-lose situation. Why don't we dive into for, for AI to really drive digital transformation, all right? So how organizations should think about before introducing the new technology, all right? You mentioned organizing your data. I'm sure there is mm -hmm. data prep. I'm sure there is cleanup. There are major effort before you can kind of dive into sexy, beautiful new technology you're about to acquire. So where is this next step you see that people taking and that they able to reach the goals they are after? Yeah, of course. So um, see, if you think about organizing the data, of course, you have to, you know, um, start looking at uh, what your data is all about, etc. And, and I think, you know, you every organization should have a unit which is called data stewards unit in, in, within the organization who owns the entire data, who knows what, what goes into that data, et cetera, right? And then, of course, you can bring in the right data engineering skills. You can you know, do a lot many more things about it. But I think what happens post that, Erin, right? I mean, once you have uh, done all of this, there's, there's a lot that you do with data cleaning, right? And I feel that instead of doing it for every occasion, you need to make sure that at least 80% of your data preparation is automated because it's not it's not something that you know and and you know i have grown uh, from a, a bi analyst to start with to a data scientist and today i'm a you know ai ml product owner and uh, developer but then what i've seen is in in order to build any uh, you know cool sexy model uh, machine learning model, 80% of my time would actually go into data preparation, right? And this time I was spending every time I was building the model. But why should that be the case, right? 80% of my brain powers is actually going into just cleaning a mess. Why? If I clean it once, why can't I keep using it every time? And that's what happens in digital transformation, right? understand your data well in the beginning itself, make it clean, make the processes so, such that it is following the same rules that you've defined for it because majority of the time, the cleaning actually needs the same process, same steps, right? So why to repeat it every time? Just establish a process which can do it for you. So that's one thing which I say, but I, I feel, and, and you know, once the organizations are able to do it, it does not sound as complicated as it is before they start on the journey, right? But I, I also feel that a cup, last couple of years, there was a, there's a lot uh, of buzz around digital transformation and hence, pe and hence the organizations feel that if they start building a lot of 
really cool machine learning models that's where they will be able to create a lot of value for their organization they'll be able to really come up with you know great insights or great predictions about their organization right which is where i and i i i totally agree with that right if you're doing a lot of machine learning you will be able to bring in a lot of value but you know with with all of this race there happens a democratization of machine learning models right people start developing so many models that they actually forget if they're doing it in the right way or not here and that's where the entire governance comes into the picture right data security is again very very important concept which i think started as a and or kind of a question in organizations mind sometime back but i feel that it is always an and question, question and not a or question you can't ignore data security you might have seen that you know with building so much of data at times when you know those uh, uh, cyber attack happens on the organization they lose so much of uh, you know information about them as well as the credibility in their uh, customers mind that's where i think data security and having the right governance processes are extremely important responsible ai comes into the picture as a result of this as well right when you're building those machine learning models do you really know what those models are uh, defining for you do you really know how the data is getting interpreted in those models i hope the data is not making the the models very uh, you know racist or i hope the data is not uh, the, the models are not using the data in a way that it should not so keeping all of those things in mind is also very very important is what i say and there has to be you know someone in the organization who's taking care of these things who's ensuring that before approving the model to go into the production all of these things are really well tested and that's where you know i think banks do an amazing job at it i am with american express and we do a great job at it we have uh you know different teams we have a team which takes care of fair lending where there is a team which takes care of compliance and all of these teams have their own roles to really ensure that when we are taking certain decisions for our customers the they are taken in a responsible way they are you know there's a pro proper process which is followed to approve these models before they hit the decision making and before they go into the system so yeah that's how i think you know it it goes hand in hand having the right data cleaning it well in a pro, in in a, in an automated way making sure that there is a security around it making sure that once you start using the data for your machine learning model building you are following the right governance process you are being responsible in developing it and hence productionizing it what about scaling scaling the initiative because uh, we know that kind of start small right show the uh, the successes quickly right be your own advocate across organization just kind of right just reporting your success just making sure that people around you know in your in organization what you're able to achieve how about scaling up because digital transformation or ai initiative right you mentioned the kind of resources the teams the different roles responsibilities right so what's your learning in terms of successfully scaling the initiative and i again love you for this question i can't imagine you're just reading my mind like anything but anyways if if i were to throw some numbers right for a data scientist who is sitting there and building machine learning model i don't know how many of us know that 90% of their work actually do not go to production right it is only so far the numbers that we've seen is it's only about 10 to 15% of their work which actually hits the production system which actually goes into uh, making the right business decisions and you know that's what actually brings in the right revenue boom for the organization and hence you know scaling is so very important imagine if we are able to really scale 
all of the hundred percent of the work a data scientist does on, uh, you know, on a day to day basis, how much more we will be able to bring to the business. Right. And that's where I think all the scaling initiatives right now are going on, wherein whenever a data scientist is building a model or doing something innovative, which will bring in value for the organization, how do we ensure that it really is just not a shiny toy for them to show that there is potential, right? But it should actually hit the production system. It should actually get into the business for the right decision making so that we are able to really make sure that the business is getting benefited uh, from them. And that's where, you know, all of these um, uh, platforms come into the picture, right? For example, IDA, the platform that I own, that does, you know, things end to end. We are allowing our machine learning modelers, our AI ML skill to come and do things end to end. They come and learn about how they can, you know, use the data, do all of their machine learning models, et cetera, develop the models, do the governance, then deploy them into the production system and eventually also monitor how well they, their models are doing. And, you know, uh, in the organizations, majority of the time, we also feel that, uh, you know, uh, I have my own infrastructure, I'm able to do it well, but with the ever increasing data sizes, etc., I also feel Erin, that cloud plays a lot of role there, right? You are able to get the right compute from the cloud. Uh, you are able to really use the latest technology that these organizations are building for the industry, which you may or may not be able to do so much if you're only using on-prem infra within your own organization. So I'm a big fan of using a hybrid of, you know, on-prem as well as cloud because cloud gets a very, you know, get, gets us to become, make it more expensive for the business as well. So in my organization, I use a healthy mix of hybrid uh, on-prem as well as cloud compute to keep, you know, with the industry, we use cloud. But to ensure that we are still controlling our expenses, we use uh, on-prem. Is really leveraging the flexibility of the cloud, right? But at the exactly. same time, approaching approaching it mindfully, using your own resources to the best ability. My last few talks was about FinApps. This is cloud cost optimization approaches, you know, that company adapting. When we talk about cloud and AI and all the digital technologies and machine learning, metaverse, more and more mm -hmm. businesses uh, yeah. looking into that, right? So where do you see uh, this technology stack is going in the future? Because of course, more and more being added, AR, VR, metaverse, right? What's next you think is gonna be there? Totally, uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, metaverse is, I, I feel that metaverse is going to play a very big role in coming times because, again, I, I keep going back to pandemic because that's when I feel, you know, the lot of innovation happen in this area as well, right? Uh, uh, for most of the organizations today, the question is not, you know, if, if all the uh, employees would come and work every day in the office the question is do we want to come once a week or twice a week and when are we come whenever we are coming it has to be a meaningful uh, you know reason of coming to the offices and that's what is the beauty here right i mean i i see a lot of stickiness in the employees now as compared to what we were seeing you know maybe a couple of uh, months back there was a great re uh, resignation period which is going which was going on right but the employees have now realized that they are getting the same flex they are getting the flexibility that they want in their careers in their you know uh, to, to balance their personal and professional life by even you know giving the same amount of productivity by working from home as well Right. And that's where things like metaverse will play a lot of role, wherein even though I'm sitting at my home and, you know, just using my laptop to do few things, but I still get the, the, the feel that I'm sitting next to my colleague and I'm doing the, the, the same level of brainstorming that I would have done if I was actually sitting next to him or her. Right. That's what I think, uh, you know, a, a lot is going to happen in this area. I also feel, I mean, this area is quite untouched right now because you're still talking about your AR, VR, virtual avatar, et cetera. But what about those other sensory feelings? Can I touch 
can i feel can i smell you know those are the kind of things i think that's going to you know enhance a lot in retail these things are extremely important right when i'm buying let's say a dress for myself i don't even uh, you know i don't only want to you know wear it and see how i look but i also want to feel the fabric of it i also when i'm buying a perfume i don't want to just see you know which brand is it or which um, flavor is it but i really want to smell it before i buy and how do i do it on e-commerce right those are the innovations i think would happen over time uh, it's it, it sounds very imaginary right now but i think it is bound to happen and that's where the true value uh, uh, will will unlock that so that's one thing which i feel is going to become very very important second is chat gpt i don't know you know how soon it has taken such a big amount of shape and size oh my god it's so exciting right uh, and i feel there will be a lot more which will happen in this area right uh, uh, the mundane things which do not need our brain would actually be taken up by things by things like chat gpt etc you know i was playing with chat gpt the other day and i i you know i always feel that the the younger generation is much smarter than uh, us and and i asked a very very funny question to chat gpt saying that you know why do you think the teenagers are much smarter than us and you know i was very very surprised to see although it was a fun question that i asked chat gpt but then the response i got was such a responsible response uh, response right i mean the the gpt said that you cannot generalize you know someone's intelligence with their age and i was super impressed to see that you know that when when um, organizations are building such product they are keeping in mind the stereotype that we you know uh, that that plays in our uh, back of our mind and things like that so i think you know most of these things would happen but it is extremely important for organizations to keep in mind doing the things in the right way and hence you know a lot of uh, value will be unlocked i i feel Yep, yep, yep. What a bright, bright future. So I'm glad you brought Chat GPT. I meant to ask you this question. So, and my favorite question to all my guests is what's your favorite kind of experiment with Chat GPT? And you brought it right in, you know, with a silly question that hey made you thought think, right? Made you think that you know what, maybe AI is getting smarter for a good reason. And we will have to work, you know, enhancing ourselves and not necessarily being afraid of hey. chat gpt is going to take all our jobs or is going to enhance us so much that we're not going to recognize human kind anymore i'm a big proponent of it by the way meaning that uh we will still need to write the brilliant books we will still need to learn a lot as humans we will still need to be the experts we can be the best we can be with the help of ai but you know ai is not going to replace what we can bring to this world what's your kind of philosophical take on it mom i have to ask in conclusion in a way how humans and ai will exist yeah in the years future i totally agree with you erin i mean see human beings exist for a reason right nothing can really take over the world i mean we are the only species which has grown so much right i mean uh, from from monkeys to where we are today right we are totally in a way owning the world right uh, the entire planet is owned by human being and that's only because of the intelligence this species has i don't think any machine can take over it it definitely would take over those jobs which are mundane those jobs which do not have so much of you know uh, thinking around it because you know if if it is and i and i remember right when i was uh, when i was doing one of my internship in my college there was you know one particular uh, part of my job wherein i was just copy pasting things you know from one place to another and those are the kind of things which i feel should not take up my time and that's where you know all the jobs which are of this kind of nature those would be taken up by machine because you know we want our human resource which is such an important thing which is such a valuable resource to be utilized in a way which benefits for the advancement of the world and not to just do mundane task and that's where i feel that you know only those 
jobs will be eliminated which do not need our thinking and only those people should be scared of it who do not want to keep learning but then anyone who has the right um aptitude to keep learning and enhan- en- enhancing their skills and anyone who really wants to keep innovating they should always feel that they are going to be always in demand and would always keep adding value to the world mamta this is perfect conclusion for our conversation today i appreciate your time i appreciate your expertise and i love the future that you're describing Thank you so much. Thanks to our audience for listening in again. Please follow Mamta. She is a wealth of knowledge. She is a wealth of wisdom and experience, as you can see. And follow Sogo Talks everywhere you watch us. Thank you, Mamta, so very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erin. Totally love talking to you.